So hello, um, today myself and the wonderful, wonderful Lottie are join is joining me um, to have the big number natter. Um, so you may or may not know, I am an ambassador for the wonderful charity, Natural Numeracy. Uh, they're all about trying to build up people's confidence with numbers so it can help with daily life. And today Lottie has very kindly joined us to have a number natter to chat about numbers, chat about how we use them in our lives. And this is part of Natural Numeracy's national numeracy day activities and um, so lots of people are getting together having number natters and thank you so much for joining me lottie how are you doing i'm good thank you for having me really excited to talk about numbers <laughs> so you say that in uh in in a way that sounds incredibly excited how how do you sort of like feel about numbers do you think about do you have a relationship with them i think um i definitely think my relationship with numbers has changed since baking um, I think that at school, um, I was always quite lucky in that I did quite well at school and I was quite academic, but numbers for me was always something I really had to work quite hard at. It doesn't come naturally to me, whereas kind of like sciences and languages came naturally to me, but maths was like, oh, I need to really kind of sit down and, and work stuff through quite slowly. Um, and that's the same with all of my family as well. So um, my mother is convinced that she has numerical dyslexia. Like she literally sees numbers the wrong way around. And like, yeah, she gets really confused. And so it's n none of us are very good at maths, bottom line. And it was only when I started realising that numbers could be helpful that I then started thinking, OK, I actually need to put a bit more time and effort into this because they're really, really useful. So, yeah. They are useful. So were, were your folks... Were they encouraging this sort of trying to trying to get that that knowledge of numbers being useful and trying to promote that and support that? Or was it a bit of a, a bit of a trudge? I think it was a bit of a trudge in so much as like my dad um, is a carpenter. So he uses numbers in a really practical way. And he used to say to me, like, if there's a way that you can make maths feel practical as in you know you stop looking at it on the paper and you start looking at it as, as like something you're building something you can see physically in front of you then you'll get your head around it a bit better and that really did help and I think that mm. the one thing that I use really really regularly is kind of you know when we line a baking tin and yes. you're kind of making a circle and I just think why was I not listening when it came to pie in class like everyone just recites this number but actually that would be super useful um yeah. so yeah mixed bag i i use it's the area of a circle equation i use constantly because when i'm when i'm scaling up or down cakes i'm doing that so much and when we were when we're on bake off doing all the recipe testing and like you have to make your showstopper bakes and of course there's some that it's like you have to make a cake that is a foot wide and it's absolutely giant so you've got to scale up all your recipes so i was doing that constantly when yeah. we were um when we were making those silly massive giant <laughs> cakes that we had that no one would ever need to replicate at the time <laughs> it's because those recipes don't exist right because no one makes cakes that are that big unless you're doing something like bake-off so those recipes don't exist and it really does mean that you have to work it out like find the ratio yeah. and kind of like yeah I mean maths played a big part for me in all the bake-off prep but now for me that's still I still like that a lot because um I think I think it's like I mean, I'm, I think we're a bit of an anomaly when we're so obsessed with baking that we've got all these many, many tins. But I'm now thinking like when I'm writing recipes for folk, I, I want to use as few tins as possible uh, because not everyone has. I mean, I, I'm, I'm back home at my folks now and I've got their garages full of my baking stuff and my flat in town that I actually live in is full of baking stuff. Yeah. But most people have a couple cake tins and it's nice to be able to scale up and down and use those use those simple ratios. Um, yeah quite well um it is it does come in handy yeah it does come so in we, handy we've kind of moved on to on to this baking thing and you you said a little bit that you did kind of start to feel more comfortable with numbers through baking you yeah I, chat about that yeah I think it's the kind of I had to realize that they weren't the enemy and that at school they were gen like because I didn't understand it and it was difficult for me to not be very good at something academically I just couldn't understand why I wasn't good at it because I was quite good at the other bits so it was like why am I having this mental block and I think that in baking seeing it really come into play means that 
um i know that they're useful and they aren't the enemy and that i shouldn't be scared of them it's just like there's like if they're there to help if that makes sense um and it's actually really difficult to bake without using numbers and i think that there's definitely because i when i do recipe testing as well and i'm thinking about people certainly in the states they use a lot of cups yeah. and um that to me is just a complete like i'm all for throwing stuff in a bowl and seeing what happens but for us weighing stuff is super important and like you know five grams here and five grams there is kind of irrelevant of flour or sugar but if that was like five grams of gelatin then that's yeah. going to be you know that's like that's the end so i think that um they are they're good to have on side definitely numbers are good to have on side i think that's what i'm trying to say and I like, I like, I'm going to, I'm going to plug all the National Numeracy Day stuff here because the way that you say that, like baking is almost an undercover way of getting, working with numbers. And I think that's what National Numeracy does so well. And National Numeracy Day, it has loads of resources available of activities to get, you know, activities for kids to get them. Like I've got a cake recipe and it's just showing where numbers are involved in that and you're engaging in them in this really simple way. And uh, and there's other things with, with dance, with Katia, with rap, with Harry Baker. So it's like those undercover numbers that you don't quite realize you're using every day. And that can be a way to get people that are slightly less comfortable to to just engage in a, in a, yeah. a less scary way if it's, yeah. if it's difficult. And I think that when you're, as you say, like when you're utilizing them in something that you want to do, i.e. a hobby like dance or baking, you're already in a good mood because you're like, oh, I like doing this thing. And then yeah. the little numbers are just sneaking around in there, but actually they're super useful to have there. Yeah, I completely agree. If you can find something that you're passionate about and then recognize that you're actually using numbers a lot, then it becomes a lot less daunting the next time you're faced with a sheet of numbers, which I guess you're faced with every day, right? In accountancy, the thought of that, looking at a page of numbers, just I just need to remember that, you know, those numbers are my friend occasionally. Mm. For baking. I suppose. I suppose, yeah, looking at a set of accounts is maybe is maybe a bit of a hardcore way to go into it. So let's start looking at an ingredients list with 200 exactly. grams of flour instead of uh, looking at yeah. thousands of pounds or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's probably a, a safer way to start. Yeah, um, I want to I want to I want to move things forward to July. This is a very, very exciting time. So you've got your your book is coming out. I'm beyond <laughs> excited for you. I'm very, very I'm, I'm, I'm just can't wait to get my hands on it. Can you can you tell us a little bit about what the book is? Yeah, and, so and when it's coming. So the book is called Baking Imperfect. It is out on the seventh of July. Um, so yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? I think for me, my baking journey was um, uh, just a process of trial and error, and um, when something didn't work, rather than kind of throwing it in the bin, thinking what can we do with that, try not to beat yourself up about it, and. Um, I really think that I've always kind of looked at baking and patisserie in particular as something that is really out of my reach because I don't have that skill set. Um, so for me, um, Baking Imperfect is about making people feel comfortable to have a go. And if it goes wrong, what is the worst case scenario? If something goes wrong, like you can feed the birds with it. Do you know what I mean? Like there's not, it, there's no, that there is no worst case scenario that isn't manageable. Yeah. And so it's kind of just about getting stuck in and I really want to encourage people just to have a go. I I absolutely love that. Yeah, it's just, what is the worst case scenario? When, it, when it's cake, the worst case scenario is that you just put custard on it and it tastes great. Exactly. It's, it's amazing. Um, and it actually, this is why I wanted to get you on this because I kind of knew that that was going to be a little bit of the, the mission behind the book. And it so resonates with national numeracy and, and the thought that trying to make it not scary, trying to encourage people to just get going um, with obviously in the national industry, get going, engaging with numbers and, and developing those skills. And with you with baking, just get going. You know, you, you're never going to improve until you start. And it can be scary to start sometimes, but trying to, trying to welcome people in with Baking Imperfect, trying to welcome people in with the resources of National Numeracy Day. I think that's a great way to go. Yeah. Um, and, I, and I'm also, I'm also kind of really interested to hear about this because a book will be there very, very soon. A physical book. It's an amazing feeling to, to get your hands on it, um, which is, is crazy. But so much work goes into it before. There's a huge process of, you know, thinking up the recipes you're going to be doing, um, obviously writing those recipes, testing them, developing them. And 
I don't really know how other people do it. I've got my ways of how I figure out a recipe. And for me, you might not be so surprised to hear a lot of them are quite analytical, I suppose, and, and, <laughs> and we're using ratios or using numbers. But how have you got a sort of process that you go about in writing recipes? I'm really interested. So um, let's let's be clear that your way works better because you are the winner of Bake Off and uh, you've already got a book out. So I think your way works better than mine. But um, I'm much more, um, and I doubt this will surprise you either. We know each other fairly well. I think um, mine, mine starts with flavour. So mm. I think all about my flavours. What flavour do I like? Is there a sweet that I like that I want to replicate? Is there a particular dessert from childhood that I want? And then I think, how can I mash that up with something that people recognise? So like, let's turn, I don't know, this is a ridiculous suggestion, but like an ice cream into a bread, for example. So then I'll look at like bread recipes that are in existence and I will try and work out how much of those numbers in terms of the weights and ratios are malleable and how many of those need to stay firm in order for the bake to actually come out as a finished article. Yeah. And so then once I've worked out what I can play with, that's how I add my flavours in. And then, yeah, it's a mishmash. There's no there's no real analytics. It's just me eating as much food as possible and judging it. No, that that is it. That's that's it is actually very similar to how how I go about it, because mine is is like you've got to look at the work that's come before. You. You've got to look at other recipes that are out there and sort of I'll, I'll typically look at some of my favorites that I've used before and combine them with with other ones. And, you know, I I get this sort of wide range and I, I understand if it's a brownie or something, I kind of get what are the, the bounds that a brownie sits in with all these ratios. And then I go, what what end result do I want to see? And then if you've got a bit of a knowledge of, of what each ingredient does, then you can play yeah. about within those bounds that you found and within those ratios to get your sort of perfect result. So there there is a lot of similarities there. I, uh, <laughs> I think I think we're, uh, we're we're pretty on on the same track. Um, yeah, so that's that I suppose that's a little bit of the background to behind Lottie's magical baking works and uh, and what's going to be in Baking Perfect. That's very, very exciting. Um, to finish off, because I've, I've used up a lot of your time and it's very, very good of you to, to be giving us all your uh, very special time, but your your book is called Baking Imperfect. It is. There must be some blunders that get you along that way. So as as a final question, have you got a standout baking blunder from the days? There are so many, it won't surprise you to hear. Like, it's just one blunder after another. And in, in within those blunders, sometimes there's a small slither of genius, and then that becomes a recipe, right? But I'm honestly, the majority of the time, I am messing up. Um, one thing that happened to me fairly recently, dinner party, I had a lovely tart that I had in the oven, beautifully short pastry. Um, it was all ready to go. The filling was set. It was perfect. I bought it out of the oven, forgot that it was a loose bottom tin, picked it up like that. Oh, and the whole no. thing just exploded. And the pastry was so short that honestly, it just exploded and disintegrated. And I couldn't even serve like... I was just kind of thinking, can I scoop this off the floor? Can I call it eaten mess? Like, is there anything? I, the answer was no. So they just had the um, ice cream that I was due to serve with the tart. They just had that. Um, well, ice cream's, I think, the best thing in the world. So You so do love ice you still, cream. <laughs> you still serve them something great. But yes, I, I have also done that with a loose bottom, bottom it's tart. It's so before. dangerous. Um, and you're, like, very, it's, like, such dangerous. it's so precious that you're, like, trying to be really careful. But equally, it's hot in the oven, so you've got to move fast. And, like, oh. yeah. So and yeah, there are many that. of those, but that's the standout one from recently, yeah. Well, yeah, I um I've certainly been messing up a lot as I've as I've been getting it's it's a correlation between being quite tired and sort of a little bit stressed out. I just had my exams, a little bit stressed out, so then I'm not quite thinking all the way. And then, you know, I've I had I had one recently where I, I had a cake in the oven, but it had thirty five minutes to go and I had a loaf of bread on the go. The bread was proved, the cake had thirty five minutes left. And I was like, which one do I choose? Which one do I choose? So the cake had to come out. It was it was sacrificed. So I had to scramble it up <laughs> because I needed to I needed to. Uh, well, actually, I didn't need to scramble it up. I decided to put it in a pan and cook it and cook up the raw cake batter. In I saw pan. this on Instagram um, because for some reason in my head, I thought, oh, that's a great idea to do. Um, you know, why not? But I think that was just me being a little bit delirious and not getting my timings right. Numbers are important in baking. Timings, I should have got that right. I should have known when my bread was going to be proved and then I wouldn't have had scrambled cake. Um, but there we go. 
we make mistakes, we improve, we get better, we learn from them. And that happens in baking, that happens in numbers. So Lottie, thank you so much. It's also just been a delight to get to catch up and chat again. I know, uh, I miss been... you. I feel like, you know, whatever it is, the excuse, whatever it is, I'm here to just chat to you, to be honest. And it's been lovely. So if we can do any form of helping with people with numbers who might feel a bit daunted by them, then that's a bonus. Well, I certainly, uh, I think you've been very, very supportive of that. And uh, if I was anyone watching this, um, I hope that you've been inspired to, to get going with starting your number journey if you feel a little bit daunted by them. Um, and you can do that by going onto National Numeracy's Instagram page. There's loads of resources for National Numeracy today. Other people are having number natters like this. You can have your own number natter and share that with National Numeracy. And also the big thing with National Numeracy is you can go online and start the National Numeracy Challenge, which is a, a free thing to do online. It sort of helps you to see where in maths you can improve and gives you some fun resources that you can that you can pick up and learn how to develop those skills. It's a really great first step in improving your number confidence to help you with every aspect of your life. And um, so Lottie, thank you so much and everyone for joining us. Thanks, thanks so much for coming along. It's been great. Thank you. See you soon. Bye.